Legends never disappear, they just find new ways to shine. The amazing guitar work of Jimi Hendrix and the memorable lyrics of Jim Morrison are just parts of the magic they left behind. Even though their early departures were huge losses to music, their impact is still felt today. It was a great loss. I mean, when, when anybody goes that you love, and especially her, I mean, she was, some people aren't supposed to die, you know. For fans who want to pay their respects, visiting their final resting places is a special way to connect with their lasting influence. Join us as we learn more about these legendary rock stars and their final resting places. Jimi Hendrix. Arguably one of the greatest guitarists of all time, Jimi Hendrix passed away at just 27 years old on September 18, 1970. He was discovered in a room at London's Samarkand Hotel, which belonged to his on-again, off-again romantic partner, Monica Daneman. The circumstances surrounding Hendrix's death remain unclear, as Daneman and others have provided conflicting information. It appears Hendrix had taken potent sleeping pills along with red wine, which led to him vomiting in his sleep and ultimately choking. The coroner issued an open verdict regarding his death. Hendrix's burial became a point of contention. He was initially laid to rest in Greenwood Memorial Park Cemetery in his hometown of Renton, Washington, with a simple gravestone that read, Forever in our hearts. In 1999, however, his family announced plans to construct a 27-foot stone memorial in the cemetery, partly funded by fans. This memorial featured granite pillars, a domed roof, and sculptures. Despite objections from some of Hendrix's friends who deemed the exhumation disrespectful, the memorial was completed in 2002, and Hendrix was relocated to rest beside his father, stepmother, and grandmother. Jim Morrison Jim Morrison was in rock star retirement when he passed away in his Paris apartment on July 3, 1971, also at the age of 27. According to the official account, he was found dead in his bathtub due to heart failure. However, some witnesses suggest he may have fatally overdosed on heroin in a nightclub restroom and was later carried back to his apartment by drug dealers. Morrison's grave at Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris is one of the most renowned in the world, drawing visitors alongside other notable figures like Oscar Wilde and Frédéric Chopin. His striking memorial features a bronze plaque inscribed with his name, dates, and an ancient Greek epitaph chosen by his father, Cataton Daimona Uto. This translates roughly to true to his own spirit or true to his own demons, possibly alluding to the struggles that led Morrison to Paris. John Lennon one of the most renowned Scousers in history, John Lennon moved from England to New York in 1971. After marrying artist Yoko Ono two years earlier, he hoped the celebrity-laden city would provide him some distance from the spotlight that accompanied his status as a Beatle. Tragically, on December 8, 1980, Lennon was shot and killed outside his home by Mark Chapman, who claimed he killed Lennon for fame and notoriety. On October 9, 1985, what would have been Lennon's 45th birthday, a section of Central Park was dedicated to him. Renamed Strawberry Fields in honor of one of Lennon's beloved Beatles songs, the site features a mosaic with the word Imagine at its center, a gift from Naples, Italy. Ono played a significant role in creating the memorial, and it is believed she scattered Lennon's ashes in the area. George Harrison George Harrison the Beatle fought a nearly four-year battle with cancer before passing away at the age of 58 on November 29, 2001. This is time to know it's he was first diagnosed with throat cancer in 1997 and later with lung cancer in 1999. That same year, he survived a stabbing by a home intruder. Despite undergoing surgeries and radiation treatment, he ultimately lost his fight against the illness. A devotee of the Hare Krishna movement, Harrison was cremated shortly after his death at Hollywood Forever Memorial Park. 
Reports indicated that his wife, Olivia, and son, Dani, intended to scatter his ashes in the Ganges, a sacred river in Hindu belief located in Varanasi, India. While many fans gathered to pay their respects, it is thought that the family waited for a more private moment to perform the ritual. Cass Elliot The most infamous detail surrounding the death of Mamas and the Papas singer, Mama Cass Elliot on July 28, 1974, is completely false. She did not choke on a ham sandwich. This rumor, propagated by her manager, Alan Carr, was an attempt to conceal the truth about her drug overdose. In reality, Elliot died from heart failure, likely linked to crash dieting due to public ridicule of her weight. At just 32 years old, she passed away in a London apartment owned by musician Harry Nilsson. Her body was returned to California, where she was laid to rest at Mount Sinai Memorial Park, marked by a simple plaque. Four years later, Keith Moon, the drummer for The Who, died from a clomethiazole overdose in the same apartment. Troubled by the deaths of his friends, Nielsen eventually sold the apartment to Moon's bandmate, Pete Townshend. Roy Orbison Singer-songwriter Roy Orbison was just 52 when he passed away from a heart attack on December 6, 1988. By that time, he had already faced numerous personal tragedies, including the death of his first wife in a motorcycle accident and the loss of two of his sons in a house fire while he was on tour. In 1969, Orbison remarried Barbara Jacobs, who became both his wife and manager. During the 1980s, he enjoyed a revival in his career being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and joining the supergroup The Traveling Wilburys. Everybody got somebody. Tragically, he died unexpectedly in 1988. Orbison is buried at Westwood Memorial Park in Los Angeles, although his grave is currently unmarked. It can be found next to the grave of Barbara, who was laid to rest beside him after her death in 2011. Frank Zappa After leading a remarkable and unconventional life, Frank Zappa passed away from prostate cancer on December 4, 1993, at the age of 52. His family announced his death with a statement that read, Composer Frank Zappa left for his final tour just before 6 p.m. Saturday. He was buried at Westwood Memorial Park. An unexpected choice for someone known for defying norms. The cemetery is the final resting place for many celebrities from diverse backgrounds. While a single burial plot there can cost an astonishing $745,000, Zappa's grave remains unmarked, reportedly located near the similarly understated resting place of Roy Orbison. The family has never revealed the exact reason for this, but it certainly reflects Zappa's nature, as he always preferred to forge his own path. Dennis and Carl Wilson the Beach Boys lost more than just a bandmate when drummer Dennis Wilson drowned on December 28, 1983, at the age of 39. He was not only the middle brother of Brian and Carl, but also a cousin to Mike Love. While swimming with three others off Marina del Rey, Dennis dove underwater and never came back up. In a surprising turn of events, President Ronald Reagan intervened to grant Dennis's wish to be buried at sea, a privilege usually reserved for Navy or Coast Guard veterans. In 1997, Dennis's younger brother Carl was diagnosed with cancer, but continued to perform with the band during treatment. Tragically, in December of that year, their mother, Audrey, passed away at the age of 80 and was laid to rest at Los Angeles's Westwood Memorial Park, where her grave marker identifies her as the original surfer girl. Just two months later, on February 6, 1998, Carl also died and was buried in the same cemetery. Elvis Presley Elvis Presley had a difficult time finding privacy during his life, and even after his passing, the public's fascination with him persisted. When he died of a heart attack on August 16, 1977, at the age of 42, the nation mourned deeply, with some even struggling to accept the reality of his death. The day after Elvis's passing, his father, Vernon Presley, allowed approximately 30,000 fans to view his son lying in state at Graceland. The following day, during the funeral procession, Elvis was transported in a white hearse to Forest Hill Cemetery, accompanied by 17 white limousines for a private ceremony. Although Vernon wished for his son to be buried at Graceland, it was not zoned for burials. 
Consequently, Elvis was interred in a steel-lined coffin weighing nearly 1,000 pounds, placed in a large mausoleum next to his mother, Gladys. The tomb was sealed with a double layer of concrete and topped with a marble slab. However, the story took another turn when, on August 29th, three men attempted to steal Elvis's body, intending to ransom it. As a result, the burial rules were altered, and both Elvis and Gladys were returned to Graceland. When Vernon passed away in 1979, he was laid to rest beside them. Johnny Cash One of music's most enduring love stories began at the Grand Ole Opry and concluded less than 20 miles away at Hendersonville Memory Gardens. In 1956, rising country star Johnny Cash met the already famous June Carter backstage at the Nashville venue. Although both were married to other people at the time, Cash reportedly declared that night that he intended to marry Carter. Their professional and personal connection deepened throughout the 60s as they began touring together. Carter was inspired to write Ring of Fire to express her feelings for Cash. In 1966, Cash's first wife, Vivian Liberto, filed for divorce citing infidelity and Cash's struggles with addiction. After this, Carter and Cash officially became a couple. It wasn't until Cash proposed to her on stage in front of 7,000 fans on February 22, 1968, that she accepted, and they married just over a week later. The couple enjoyed 35 years of marriage until Carter's passing at the age of 73 on May 15, 2003. Cash followed just a few months later, on September 12th. They are buried side by side in a joint plot at Hendersonville Memory Gardens, Tennessee. We share the backstage, on stage. We share the music, the feelings, the emotions, the joy, and the pain and sadness of it all. David Bowie In the unpredictable world of rock and roll, one thing is certain. Life can end unexpectedly. However, David Bowie wasn't overly concerned about this. His keyboardist, Mike Garson, explained to Billboard that Bowie had received a kind of premonition decades earlier when a psychic told him he would die at 69 or 70. Garson noted, Bowie didn't doubt it for a second. He accepted it and planned his future around it. True to that prediction, Bowie passed away on January 10, 2016, after an 18-month battle with cancer, just two days after turning 69. This advance warning, along with his cancer diagnosis, allowed Bowie to clarify his final wishes. He requested that his ashes be cremated and scattered in Bali, in accordance with local Buddhist rituals. Despite these explicit instructions and no indication that his family intended to disregard them, rumors surfaced that his widow, Iman, had allowed some of his ashes to be scattered at the 2016 Burning Man Festival. Bowie's son, Duncan Jones, quickly took to Twitter to refute the claim, stating, What people will do and say for attention never ceases to amaze me. Not true. Kind of a gross claim as well. Eddie Van Halen The loss of Eddie Van Halen in 2020 marked a heartbreaking moment in a year that had already taken so many lives. The legendary guitarist gained fame with his band, co-founded with his brother Alex, and transformed the possibilities of electric guitar sound. He inspired both real and fictional guitarists, even providing the music for Marty's alien tape in Back to the Future, though he politely declined roles in the Bill and Ted movies. Van Halen passed away at the age of 65 on October 6, 2020, after suffering a stroke and battling cancer. Diagnosed with throat cancer in 2000, he had announced in 2004 that he was cancer-free. However, shortly after his death, his son Wolfgang revealed that Eddie had been diagnosed with advanced lung cancer in 2017 and given just six weeks to live. Van Halen sought treatment in Germany, which Wolfgang believes contributed to the three additional years he lived after that diagnosis. Unfortunately, in 2019, following a motorcycle accident, doctors discovered a brain tumor. It's thought that Wolfgang honored his father's final wishes by scattering his ashes off the coast of their hometown, Malibu, California. Mary Wilson Mary Wilson, one-third of the iconic girl group from Motown, The Supremes, passed away unexpectedly on February 8, 2021, at the age of 76. The cause was later determined to be hypertensive atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, a condition characterized by a buildup of plaque in the arteries due to high blood pressure, ultimately leading to heart failure. 
Following COVID-19 restrictions on gatherings, Wilson's family held a small private ceremony for her on March 16th, with plans for a larger celebration once it was safe. She was laid to rest at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California, a final resting place for many other legendary artists, actors, and musicians. Most importantly to Wilson, she was buried next to her son, Rafael Ferrer, who tragically died in a car accident in 1994 at just 14 years old. She is survived by three other children, including a cousin she adopted, as well as 10 grandchildren and one great-granddaughter. Freddie Mercury Freddie Mercury, the legendary singer and songwriter of Queen, thrived on the adoration of massive audiences during his life. However, he desired privacy and death. After being diagnosed with AIDS in 1987, Mercury understood that his time was limited and expressed his wish to be cremated, with his ashes scattered in a specific place, knowledge he shared only with his close friend and ex-fiance, Mary Austin. He kept this secret even from his parents, explaining, I don't want anyone to dig me up. I just want to rest in peace. Following his passing at the age of 45 on November 24, 1991, Mercury was cremated at Kensal Green Cemetery in northwest London. Austin chose to delay the scattering of his ashes for two years, fearing that revealing the location would lead to unwanted attention. In 2013, a plaque honoring Farrakh Bulsara, Mercury's birth name, was discovered on a tree in the cemetery. The inscription read, Pour être toujours près de toi avec tout mon amour. M, which translates to, always to be close to you with all my love. While many speculated that the M stood for Mary, she has since clarified that she did not scatter Mercury's ashes there. Ray Charles Ray Charles once shared with an interviewer, It's not a question of how long I live, but how well I live, as noted in his New York Times obituary. Although there was never a perfect moment to bid farewell to the multi-talented genius of soul, Charles lived to the age of 73, remarkable by rock star standards. Especially considering he overcame a heroin addiction, he continued to record music and perform until his final year. Charles passed away on June 10, 2004, due to complications from liver disease. He was laid to rest in Inglewood Park Cemetery in Los Angeles, alongside other industry legends like Ella Fitzgerald, Etta James, and Sugar Ray Robinson. His memorial service at LA's first African Methodist Episcopal Church was a star-studded event, fitting for someone of his legendary status. Performers included Stevie Wonder, Willie Nelson, and B.B. King, while the 1,500 attendees featured notable figures such as Reverend Jesse Jackson and Quincy Jones. Jones expressed his deep sense of loss, stating, I would give anything to have Charles back, but I know that heaven is a much better place with him in it. He was a man whose voice touched my heart. Dolores O'Riordan the family, friends, and fans of the Irish band The Cranberries were devastated when frontwoman Dolores O'Riordan passed away on January 15, 2018, at the age of just 46. She was found dead in the bathtub of her room at the Hilton on Park Lane in London, where she was staying during recording sessions. O'Riordan had spoken to her mother around 3 a.m., and her body was discovered about six hours later. An inquest revealed a high level of alcohol in her blood, concluding that her death was a tragic accident. Her body was returned to Ireland, where she lay in repose in an open coffin at St. Joseph's Church in Limerick, attracting thousands who came to pay their respects. The funeral was held on January 23rd at the local church in her hometown of Ballybrick in County Limerick, where she once sung in the choir. In tribute, radio stations across the country played the Cranberries' hit, When You're Gone. Following the private service, O'Riordan was laid to rest beside her father, Terence, in Cajarelli Cemetery, just a few miles away. Chuck Berry Chuck Berry is a cornerstone of rock music, having been one of the first inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. His 1955 hit, Maybelline, is often regarded as the spark that ignited the rock and roll genre. Barry began singing in his church choir at the age of six and picked up the guitar as a teenager, performing in various small talent shows. He wrote many of his most famous songs in his 30s, releasing eight top 40 hits between 1955 and 1960. Even as he aged, Barry remained active. At 88, he was still performing monthly at Blueberry Hill, a local St. Louis restaurant and bar. 
On his 90th birthday, he announced the release of his final album, Chuck, dedicated to his wife of 68 years, Thameta. Unfortunately, before the album could be released, Barry passed away from natural causes on March 18, 2017. He was laid to rest in Bellarive Heritage Gardens in his hometown of St. Louis, Missouri. Prince the sudden passing of iconic singer Prince at the age of 57 on April 21, 2016, sent shockwaves around the globe. It was particularly tragic to learn that he died from an accidental fentanyl overdose, especially given his public stance against drugs and alcohol, including a ban on both at his renowned Minnesota estate, Paisley Park. Just two days after his death, Prince was cremated in a private ceremony while fans paid their respects outside Paisley Park. At that time, his publicist indicated that the location of his ashes would remain confidential. However, in October, it was announced that Paisley Park would reopen as a museum, with Prince now serving as the main attraction. As of 2021, Prince's ashes are held in an urn, designed in collaboration with his sister, Tyka Nelson, and his nephew, President Nelson. The urn, which sits in the foyer of Paisley Park, is a miniature replica of his home, complete with a purple piano, functioning lights, and his signature gem-studded logo. Johnny and Joey Ramone or The Ramones Johnny and Joey Ramone had a famously tumultuous relationship, making it fortunate they are buried on opposite coasts. Their animosity peaked when Joey's girlfriend, Linda Danielle, cheated on him with Johnny, whom she later married. When Joey was dying of lymphoma, Johnny chose not to visit him. The only former bandmate who did was Tommy Ramone. Joey passed away on April 15, 2001, and was interred in Hillside Cemetery in Lyndhurst, New Jersey, without Johnny attending his funeral. The following year, on June 5th, Dee Dee Ramone died from a heroin overdose at the age of 50. Shortly after the band was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he was buried in Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Los Angeles. Johnny followed him there two years later, succumbing to prostate cancer at age 55 on September 15, 2004. Johnny was cremated, and Linda kept his ashes. However, he also had a four-foot statue of himself erected in the cemetery. Joey isn't completely alone on the East Coast, as Tommy Ramone passed away on July 11, 2014, from bile duct cancer, and was buried in New Montefiore Cemetery, New York. Janis Joplin Janis Joplin passed away from an accidental heroin overdose on October 4, 1970, just three weeks after Jimi Hendrix's death and nine months before Jim Morrison's. She was cremated two days later at Westwood Village Mortuary in Los Angeles, with only 10 attendees present. In accordance with her wishes, her ashes were scattered in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Marin County, north of San Francisco. While you can't visit the exact location of her ashes, you can go to the room where she died, located in what is now the Highland Gardens Hotel, formerly the Landmark Hotel, on Franklin and North Sycamore Avenues in Hollywood. If you're feeling adventurous, you can even spend the night there. Room 105 features a plaque honoring Joplin, and the closet is filled with heartfelt messages from fans paying tribute to the iconic singer. Kurt Cobain Kurt Cobain, the lead singer of the immensely popular rock band Nirvana, tragically took his own life at the age of 25. His death on April 5, 1994, at his Seattle home is a widely known story, with his body discovered three days later. Following his passing, Cobain's widow, Courtney Love, arranged for his cremation. The couple had practiced Buddhism intermittently, so she sought to ensure his remains received the proper spiritual treatment. Love divided his ashes, scattering some in the Wishka River near his childhood home and keeping a portion for herself, reportedly in a bear-shaped handbag along with her wedding dress. Love later took the ashes to a Buddhist monastery in Ithaca, New York, where she left some with the monks for consecration. They mixed the ashes with clay to create tzatzas, small cone-shaped sculptures about three inches tall, painted gold, meant to be displayed in a shrine. She returned home with the remaining ashes, which she kept in her closet until 2008, when she reported them stolen, allegedly by someone she knew. We are coming to an end here today. Thanks for watching. And for such top listing videos, subscribe to our channel.